Wakfu. You've probably seen it recommended on Netflix. Maybe you didn't watch it because it looks weird. Maybe you did watch it and now you're all confused. Or maybe YouTube's algorithm only recommended this video to you because you like Homestuck and that's my most popular video for probably the rest of my life. Well, no matter why you're here, I'm glad you are. There's no sponsor, so I don't have to censor the cuss words. Feel free to comment if you learn something. Let's have fun. Wakfu is a complicated fucking franchise created by a French game company called Onkama, existing in a fictional universe called the Crosmos. It involves Flash animation, MMOs, and a lot of French. It's been games and shows and little figurines and all of its canon. There's nothing quite like it and probably won't ever be again because the internet is a nightmare now. I hope by the end of the video you can appreciate what Wakfu is, if not as a fan, then at least as a spectator. Shit's weird, but I'm here to explain it. I've been a fan since before there were English dubs. I stole that shit like the good old days of DateBio.com. I've done cosplay. I've made fan art. Wakfu is the reason I took three courses of French in college. J'ai tout oublié. Hello, I'm Hawkwood, and we have a lot to talk about. First point of order about the anime. This is not an anime. Anime is Japanese. This is French. But I'm going to call it an anime anyway because language is mutable and I think it's funny. Besides, despite the bright colors, Wagfu actually has next to nothing to do with American cartoons. It's a kid's show, sure, but it's a French kid's show, so... You know... Disney S&P would have some thoughts. It's also worth noting that the Not Actually Anime is inspired by Yes Actually Anime. Their animation pipeline uses Japanese animation terms and methods, and two of its special episodes were produced in Japan. One by Madhouse, yes, that Madhouse, and one by Studio Ghibli, yes, that Studio Ghibli. We live in post-globalization, what do you want? The Wakfu Let's Call It Anime started in 2008. It's not the beginning of the franchise, but it's the first part that most people get introduced to, so we're starting here. Don't worry, the other stuff's coming up later. Relax. Live in the moment. On the surface, the anime is your typical coming-of-age Bill Doug's Romon adventure story, where an unlikely cabal of buddies joins forces to make sure a little kid doesn't get clocked through the face by a time wizard. It's also really relatable, since climate change is a major theme, but less relatable since climate change is caused by a crying ogre with six eggs. Our main little guy is a lovable sort named Hugo. By the end of the first episode, he's learned that he's adopted, dragons are real, and he can think with portals. This is as close to normal as we're ever going to get. Hugo is joined on his adventure by a plant princess, a not-elf archer, an old guy, and a berserker knight with a cursed sword. It's a lot of fun, and there's a little bird, too. Throughout the show, the group is hunted by this crazy sack of psychological disorders. <laughs> He's a time mage named Nox, and isn't that just the coolest? He's also doing just... fine. Thanks. But for unrelated reasons, he would just love to gobble up a whole bunch of the life essence of the planet. In Final Fantasy VII, this was called the live stream, but in Wakfu, it's called Wakfu. Oh hey, that's the name. But the Hugo v. Knox conflict isn't actually long enough to sustain a whole season, so what Rockfu really ends up being about is... football. <laughs> there are 26 episodes in season 1. Three of them are this. The show does have a lot of long plot threads and fun character development, but tends to be episodic in nature, especially in the beginning. One episode might be about a set of ugly princesses and a bunch of frogs. 
Another will see our heroes defend a town of puddle people against a band of bulls who aren't actually an allegory for landlords, but it's neat to think about because their passive income comes at the cost of someone else's food supply and they don't see a problem with that. I won't go into more details on the plot because I really hope you watch it if you haven't. It's cute when it wants to be, and then it goes fucking hard. Then it's cute again. I love it. I recommend watching it in French with English subtitles. The voice actors really nail it. <laughs> if you do watch the quote-unquote anime, the first thing to pop out at you is probably the art style, both in how it's designed and how it moves. There's a reason for that. Instead of being hand-drawn like old animation or using standard animation software like Retaz, Toons, or Clip Studio, Wakfu is made almost entirely in... Flash. Yes, that same software that made Newgrounds a thing, and yes, the same software that did all that cool Homestuck stuff. It's all coming together. Flash was great in the early internet days because the file sizes were really small. The program was easy to learn. Instead of just animating everything by hand, you could just move the important parts and let the program calculate the motion between them. Flash could have cemented itself right there as the industry standard app for animation, but Adobe never seemed to care about the artists who used their program for creativity. It was really designed for making small animations on websites, and that was about as far as Adobe was willing to take it. Because of that, professional animation studios migrated to fancier programs with actual support and a lot less crashes. Anything still done in Flash tended to look like this. Not this time, Gonard! Wakfu looks like this. That's in the first five minutes of episode one. So why the hell is Ancama still using a lightweight browser animation software to make a TV show? That's supposed to be made for browser games, right? Well, funny I should say that. Uncommon got its start in the early 2000s as an internet marketing agency. Its three founders actually wanted to make a video game, but had to do that whole grow up and get a real job thing first because stuff costs money, even in France. But it wouldn't be long before the company transitioned fully into video game development. They created a browser game in Flash, which they released in 2004. They called it Dofus, named after a set of magical eggs in the game, and it was a goddamn MMO. For some perspective, it's a meme in the game design community that everyone wants their first game to be an MMO. It's an intrusive dream that always ends in failure. In 2004, Uncommon did it with a small team in a browser with Flash. Not to mention utilizing a unique art style, original character classes, and a brand new IP. It should have been a disaster. Instead, within four years, it became the sixth most subscribed MMO in the world. Unlike other MMOs, Dofus is a turn-based strategy RPG with an original universe, a large pantheon, and some complicated lore. There are 18 character classes, and they aren't simply D&D ripoffs like most video game class systems. In Dofus, you can be a gambling cat, or a blood berserker, or a plant, or a female plant. Each class serves one of the gods and has its own unique set of spells which plays entirely different from any other. Players can also learn professions, like collecting wood or flowers, in order to make usable health items or armor. How cool is that? The fact that Dofus is built in Flash means that it isn't very resource intensive, so the game runs just fine on old machines. This, combined with the low subscription cost, means that Dofus can be played by a much wider potential audience than other MMOs, especially in emerging markets like Latin America. Now the sharp-eared folks in the audience might have noticed that I'm using the present tense when talking about an MMO that came out 18 years ago. That's because Dofus is still being updated, has changed to a free model, and is currently played by approximately 800,000 people. That number is even more impressive once you realize it has a very similar competitor to deal with. Its own sequel. Remember a few paragraphs ago when I said Uncommon got its start as an internet marketing agency? Well, that gave them a very unique outlook into the worlds of games and media. When it came time to create something new, Uncommon realized it had the power to leverage everything it knew about the internet, multimedia design, and cross-media products. 
just making another game, even another MMO, wouldn't be enough. They had the chance to do something that no one else ever had. And at last, we finally return to watch. Normally, when you're looking to adapt a property, say, turn a book into a movie, there are really only two ways to do it. Either the adaptation follows the source material, like Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings, or else it tears it apart and only uses tiny pieces for inspiration, like the Marvel movies. Wakfu is the only property I'm aware of that created its own third option. Uncommon decided its next project in the Cosmos franchise would be more than just a game. It would be a marketing Ouroboros. The game and the show were developed at the same time. They're both adaptations of each other. Anything that happens in one of them is canon in both. It gets a little messy at times, but it's fun. Let's look at some examples. The main characters of the show are all representations of their in-game classes. Yugo is an heliotrope, who specializes in positioning with portals. Amalia is a sadida, who uses both plant magic and creepy little dolls. Evangeline is a kra, so her arrows do cool shit with elements. Ruel is an inutroph, whose love of gold is a game mechanic and hopefully not racist. Eop, Sir Tristapon Pon Pon de Persidal Dally Grovey of Sadly Grove himself, the tank who attacks without thinking. The previously mentioned ugly princesses originated in the show before being brought into the game as a dungeon, but all the little animals in the show are just enemy mobs from the game. You don't have to watch or play one to enjoy the other, but if you get into both, it's fun how familiar everything becomes. It really is a fully realized and detailed, self-contained fantasy universe. I played a lot of Wakfu in college. It was a nice way to hang out with my friends. It was also an MMO we could play on a college budget, with shitty computers and no money. Since it's turn-based, you end up with a lot of downtime where you can just chat with each other, roleplay, make jokes, or draw up strategies. The cartoonish art style meant it was easy for any of us to make fan art or little comics, which was great because my art was not. It was also just really cool. The game world is in ruins, and it's up to the players to maintain the environment if they want to gain any of its benefits. For example, to make health healing bread you need wheat, but to plant wheat you need seeds. You get seeds from wheat, but you can't harvest the wheat and harvest the seeds at the same time. You have to choose which to take. And if someone takes all the wheat and doesn't plant any seeds to replace it, well, too fucking bad. It's a really weird system that I've never seen before, and I absolutely fell in love with it. I've lost countless hours trimming trees and making a little seed bank in my bag in case an area runs out of a particular type of flower. How many games let you give back to the environment instead of just killing stuff? You can even plant more mobs of monsters so you don't run out of them. And of course, there are cute pets and cute costumes and cute emotes. I will never get tired of them. If you've never tried Wakfu, you should give it a shot. Comment if you do, I want to know I did something good here. But hey, maybe you're not here for that. Maybe you don't care about the game or on Kama's history. Maybe what you really want to know is... In the beginning, a goddess fucked a dragon. The goddess was called Eliotrope, and she was the embodiment of Wakfu, the energy of life. The dragon was the embodiment of stasis, or the energy of death. In typical yin-yang fashion, a balance between the two is important. If the balance ever breaks, the universe breaks with it. Anyway, the goddess Dragon Trist gave birth to the universe, which is an egg, because why not? Ankama likes eggs. At this time, the first ten gods and the first ten demons are born. One of those demons is called Rushu, and he killed all the other ones, so now he's in charge. The Eliotrope goddess and the dragon go at it again, and this time it creates six Eliotrope dofus, or dragon eggs. These contain an Eliotrope humanoid and a dragon twin. The outermost layer of the universe egg is divided between the realm of the gods, in Glorium, and the realm of the demons, the shoestruffed crust. Further inside, we find the universe as we think of it, with all the galaxies and bullshit. Eventually, we find our way down to the World of Twelve, named after the Twelve Gods, where all the stories of Wakfu and Dofus take place. As if all these eggs weren't confusing enough, 
Smaller dragons on the world of Twelve create a new set of six dofus called Primordial Dofus. These are not heliotrope eggs, but do have immense power. Anyone who collects all six would be stronger than the gods. Enter the Dofus game. Players are tasked with finding all six Dofus. I haven't played it. I don't know how it ends, but it's an MMO, so I assume it just sort of doesn't. At the end of this timeline, some dumbass lets Ogrist get all the eggs so he can impress a girl. The gods don't like that, so they all drop down to kick his ass but get their asses kicked instead because that's how powerful those damn eggs be. His lady dies somehow, and whoops, time for a new era. The world gets flooded and everything is terrible, the end. Here's where the Wakfu game takes place, and a little after that, the Wakfu show. Ogrist is still crying a lot. I'm not going to explain everything that happens during the show, you can watch it for the plot. It gets real complicated anyway. Good luck. I hope that answers some of your questions, but it probably doesn't, I'm sorry. The timeline is messy since there are so many stories between the games, the shows, and the comics, and I can't read French. But it should be enough to give you some context for the characters and the universe. But hey, there's more! Wakfu the franchise, known collectively as the Crosmos, doesn't end here. It turns out it's popular as fuck in its home country. Dofus is the most read manga in all of France. Ankama even runs its own convention. In fact, the Wakfu MMO only has two servers. One is for every country in the world. The other is for France. So it shouldn't come as a surprise that the stuff we get in English isn't all the stuff there is. For example, while Netflix does have some of the special episodes, there are others that are painfully absent. As far as I can tell, the only legal way to get them in the U.S. was to support the original Kickstarter so that you could get this Blu-ray set, and that baffles me. This, unfortunately, includes the two OVAs that were produced in Japan. The first is Noximillion the Watchmaker. It's produced by Madhouse and tells the origin of the main villain of Season 1. As you can see, it looks like this, goddamn. The next is The Legend of Ogrist, animated by Studio Ghibli. It tells the legend of Ogrist, obviously, who is probably the most important figure in all of the Crosmos since he literally destroyed it. There's also an entire other show called Au Trésor de Caribum, or Carib's Bazaar, which is only available in French, but you can find fan subs of it online. It's a fun and cute episodic show that takes place in the Dofus timeline, all about an ex-adventurer recounting tales of his exploits to his adorable grandson. It has some of my favorite voice acting in any animated anything. <laughs> it also had an on-screen same-sex kiss a year before The Legend of Korra would get a standing ovation for having two girls hold hands for a few seconds. Dofus also had a movie called Dofus Book One, Juleth, that explores the origin of the grandson. There was also a card game once, which failed, and a figurine game, which didn't. Luckily, this one is in English. You can collect little figures which are cute as hell and each come with their own little stat sheet. They're also cross-usable between two different board games, one that's competitive and one that's co-op. They're a bit complicated. If you're into all this shit, you're never going to run out of content. Ankama is finishing up the next and final season of the Wakfu anime, which will set up the third era of the Crosmos universe. The newest MMO, called Waven, will take place in that era and is already in the alpha build. So far, the class system is even more complex, with various subclasses that look cool as hell. This has a supposed release date of sometime in 2023. That should be enough to keep you busy for a while. I hope you had fun. Please like the video if you did. Subscribe if you want, but you know that. You're an adult. And while you're waiting for your next turn in combat, why not watch some of my other videos? There's one on the last action hero that I'm really proud of. Thanks for hanging out. I appreciate it. Hey, you made it to the credits. Well, here's a little bonus scene then. I mentioned cosplay, but I never brought it out, so... Here you go. This took a very long time and hurts very bad to wear. It is full of wire. I do not recommend it. I wore it once. <laughs>